Well, hello everybody. Brian Kelson with you again. Continuing this little series on the mystery of Romans chapter 16. We find it in verses 25 to 26. And the Lord help us all as we search and see. I just want to say I am not um, somebody that is trying to build up a lot of following. I don't have a church attendance anywhere. I don't speak publicly. I don't go from church assembly to church assembly. I just sit in my own little home, and um, which I don't own. I have no property here, um, either here in America or back in Australia. I am a firm believer that we carried nothing in and we will carry nothing out. Consequently, um, I have uh, very little in earthly possessions and very few people financially support me. That's not an appeal. And I'm not playing a sympathy card. I'm just telling you who I am. Now we have looked at um, this uh, little doxology here in verses 25 and 26, 27 of Romans 16. And we've looked at a few things and I made a structure available on acts28.net. Just hit the charts tab and uh, you'll find it. It's on the left hand side about three um, insertions down. We addressed the question that this was an afterthought. That it was added later because Paul now had the revelation of the mystery. Well, um, if he did have the revelation of the mystery, why would he tack something onto the book of Romans, which was totally contrary to the dispensational setting of the entire book that he has written? If it was an afterthought, then again, why would one add it if Ephesians is already in circulation? <clears throat> now, this mystery, I think the more we examine it, structurally fits in harmony with the entire epistle of Romans. And if that is the case, then this um, is not the mystery of Ephesians and Colossians, written after Acts 28, after Israel as a nation was set aside. And what we've been looking at are the terms, the phrases, and the words that Paul is using here around this mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Because as you know, comparing uh, the uh, spiritual with spiritual, the words that the Holy Ghost has used is a way of understanding what is meant. We looked at, um, in verse um, 26, uh, this is made known to all nations. Oh, well, there you are. It's the mystery of Ephesians. No, it's made known to all nations for the obedience of the faith. That's verse 26. And the obedience of the faith, you will find, um, comes in verse 5 by whom we have received grace and apostleship of chapter 1 for obedience to the faith among all nations that's practically word to word of Romans 16 tying the doxology in this mystery with the rest of Romans so this obedience of the faith or obedience to the faith is among all nations so here we have a mystery that it's among all nations. This doesn't mean that because Paul spoke about um, being the apostle of the Gentiles and going to them with the mystery that was hidden in God in Ephesians means this is identical. Whilst we're here, we do notice, of course, in verse 2, when Paul says, that he had been called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. And we've already seen that that is um, also in context. Remember, immediate context of this mystery 
in Romans 16.25, which was kept secret since the world began, verse 26, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of our everlasting um, God. So we have a, a mystery and we have the prophets linked in the doxology and we have Paul's gospel and the prophets in the opening of this epistle. I would like you to see the word manifest in verse 16, 26. But now is made manifest. Remember, but now doesn't necessarily mean the same but now in the post acts letters. It's but now when he wrote Romans. Okay, the word manifest also comes in chapter 1 of verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Just wanted to show you that one. But the next reference is in chapter 3 of Romans, and this is very important. It comes in verse 21. These are the three occurrences of this word manifest in the letter to the Romans. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So the word manifest in that latter chapter doxology of Romans 16, being made manifest, but now is made manifest, Romans 16, 26, has occurred in very significant references earlier in the letter. So the doxology and the words used regarding this mystery are linking it back to the rest of the letter. This is not a postscript. This is not something added regarding the mystery of Ephesians, which if, we, if it was already written, then why add a postscript? Why not just say reference Ephesians? Please note also, as we have pointed out, yes, there's a little repetition. Some people jump in and don't go back and listen to previous videos or watch previous videos. And this is what we need to do. A little bit of repetition never hurt anybody. I want you to notice something. Verse 25 in the doxology section about this mystery says this, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. Oh, there you go. My gospel. And as I said earlier, in an earlier video, yes, my gospel occurs in uh, 2 Timothy 2. That's after Acts 28. But let's stay to my gospel here in context. Pardon me. My gospel occurs in Romans chapter 2, verse 16, I believe. So we already have in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Friends, I'm just giving you another evidential um, reference here to the fact that this mystery, this doxology, is not standalone and looking to something outside of Romans. It's tied to Romans. And my gospel occurs twice in Romans 2.16 and Romans 16.25, right? Now, something else I want to share with you, which is not quite um, structurally in balance, but still I want to show it to you because it's a near context um, reference. In chapter 15 of Romans, Paul uh, has said, something and I want to find the verses I think verse 33 is what we want and he said oh, <clears throat> or is it 23 but now having no more place in these parts yep it's 23 and having a great desire these many years to come unto you whensoever I take my journey into Spain I will come to you for I trust to see you in my journey and be brought on my way hither thitherward by you if first I be somewhat filled with your company so Paul, in chapter 15, which is not far from chapter 16, remember, no chapter and verse breaks in the original letter, 
we have Paul at the end here repeating his desire to go and visit them. But we already know that had, that had happened, right? In chapter 1, um, verse 9 and 10, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making a request if by any means now at length might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. <clears throat> So there at the opening of his letter and at the conclusion, not far from that mystery of chapter 16, he repeats his desire to visit them. Friends, context explains things. And what I'm trying to demonstrate right now for those of you who love to study, the context of the mystery that was kept secret since the world began, fits with the rest of Paul's letter. By the way, that structure, um, it's available, like I said, on um, x28.net. For those of you who have downloaded and printed that structure while you're watching these videos, you'll notice in se um, section C of the structure, up the top there, to the glory of God, well, those who have fallen short of it, you'll see that there's a reference to as it is written. And I have given you the references in Romans where as it is written or as written occurs. I sincerely hope, as in sincere students of the word, that you have at this point looked at every reference in Romans where it says as it is written. And you'll find one of them in chapter 15, won't we? Is it chapter 15? <clears throat> um, he said, um, uh, he talked about his ministry, right? And he says in verse 21, As it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. Sounds a lot like that mystery in 1 Corinthians 2, doesn't it? And this is out of Isaiah 52. Behold, my ser servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The king shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Paul's reference to his ministry straight out of Isaiah. Remember in Acts 13, his command to preach to the Gentiles was out of Isaiah 49. And here Romans, at the end of his Acts period ministry, well, near the end of it, he's going back to the same prophet to endorse his own ministry outside among the Gentiles, outside of the land among the Gentiles. There's no change from Acts 13 to Romans, is there? And the reference to Isaiah 52 is just a few rep verses from the mystery kept secret since the world began. You know, isn't it exciting when we actually let the scriptures explain things to us? Finally, I want to go uh, for this little section. Remember, I'm trying to keep these things short. In Acts 16, in the... Um, in this um, immediate context about this um, uh, mystery which was kept secret and we haven't spoken about that yet have we ah, we're getting there what I'm trying to show you is whatever this secret is he's already written about it in Romans he's not looking outside of Romans because you know what pogo stick eisegetics is we see the word mystery and we go jumping over to Ephesians to explain it when we have showing shown that the scripture words Paul uses by inspiration are keeping our focus in Romans. We're not going to do the pogo stick bit. Verse 25, now to him that is of power to establish you. See this word establish, and I, I, I know there are King James only folks uh, that uh, read my articles and watch my videos. Um, now, I don't refer to, uh, you know, the original manuscripts. But in this case, this word here, 
occurs in chapter 1. Now to him that is of power to establish you, establish you according to my gospel, which had occurred in chapter 2, right? This is in chapter 1. And I believe um, it is verse 11, which we've already read. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end you may be established or established. It's the same word in the original language. So establishing them in his gospel in Romans 16, 25 and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret, you have a link with my gospel, the word establish and supernatural gifts. So this mystery in context, in structure, is, has a connection with supernatural gifts. The word establish in Romans 16.25 is the word establish in verse 11 of chapter 1. This doxology is not an afterthought and someone didn't come along later and pin it. Paul wrote it when he wrote all of Romans and it's linked to everything else he said before. And to establish, according to his gospel, in the opening chapter was the imparting of some spiritual gift. He was a powerful apostle in the Acts period. With supernatural gifts, his handkerchief was sent. You know this. He's, he, um, he had incredible... Look at Acts 28. All those gifts are still manifested on the island where no one had any faith. They were just blessing Paul, who was a Hebrew, a Jew, and the Jew was blessing the nations. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. Supernatural gifts are links by association and structure with that revelation of that mystery in Romans 16. Now, of course, supernatural gifts occur in 1 Corinthians 12, don't they? And of course, in 1 Corinthians 11, those that weren't taking Passover slash communion worthily were getting sick and dying, right? That's in the Acts period. And of course, in 1 Corinthians 15, do I need to repeat this? Or should we know it by now? Christ died according to the Scriptures, rose again according to the Scriptures. You know 1 Corinthians 15. And at the bottom of the chapter, are resurrecting to what? The resurrection to the land. Supernatural gifts are a prophecy of out of Isaiah. Check 1 Corinthians 14. And so what we have is this mystery of Romans 16 by structure, by word association, is linked with supernatural gifts. And the my gospel in Romans is linked with supernatural gifts which establish the people and the word establish is at the beginning of Romans and in the context of the mystery. Now, this is not a Brian Kelson ideology here. This is Brian Kelson giving you the words that the Holy Ghost has used. There's nothing to join here. No church to come to. You can watch the videos, subscribe to Substack, just look me up there. But I want you to search and see and look at these connections. They're there. This is some fantasizing and imagination. They're the words. You've got the structure. Search and see. This mystery, kept secret since the world began, is in Romans. And it's not justification by faith through grace, because that's never been a mystery. It was said in Genesis 15, wasn't it? The Lord bless you as you search and see.